Many of us fantasize about giving up the day job, escaping the rat race and following our dreams. For thousands each year, that means opening our very own hotel or B&B. We just thought, let's run away and do it now. <laughs> we saw this view and we were like, wow, this is what we want to slice up. At home and abroad, brave Brits are throwing themselves in at the deep end. This is our guest cave house. This was a nursing home. I've worked in hotels for over 20 years, but this is the story of six brand new hoteliers. This time, it's Welsh family versus French chateau. Well, if we don't get this done tonight, then 50 guests tomorrow won't have any way to go to the toilet. As they try to build a dream for generations to come. Let's have more children here, or grandchildren, or great-grandchildren. I'm hoping to have my great-great-grandchildren here. I just want everybody to feel like a princess. But is there a sting in this family fairy tale? You don't expect something that to happen. We're one person down. And here comes the tears. <laughs> oh. Ninety miles north of Bordeaux, in rural France, the Bromley family think they've found the key to a new life. All right, watch out. There you go. <laughs> One. <laughs> Tree one, Bromley zero. <laughs> do, do, do you want me to axe it off or what? The family are from South Wales, and after globetrotting as a clan through Holland and Australia, they've ended up in the tiny French village of Le Mans to take on an extraordinary challenge. <laughs> it's so beautiful. The 14 bedroom Chateau Le Mans dates from the 14th century. You're the king of the castle up here, aren't you? In recent years, the crumbling building had been operating as a down at heel BB. Then Gerald discovered it for sale on the internet. I was looking for businesses online, you know, businesses maybe for ideas sale, even. ideas yeah. mainly. Yeah. And that one popped up and, and kept popping up. Kept popping up. I think when I first saw the photo, I kind of chuckled to myself and said, It's Gerald. Crazy idiot. Yeah, always thinking big. <laughs> The couple saw an opportunity to create something lasting for them and generations of future Bromleys. We want to have a boutique luxury hotel. It's going to um, have a lot of romance. I think everybody goes through life and hopes that they leave something for their, their children, you know, when they, they die and, and stuff, I suppose. I think that family is the most important thing to this project. And the whole family has bought into the plan. They've sold up everything they own and put all their savings into one communal pot, including daughter Sarah Jane and her husband Scott. This isn't just this do it up and sell it off. This is this have this for the rest of our lives. This settle here, this have more children here or grandchildren or great grandchildren. I'm hoping to have my great great grandchildren here and her 20-year-old brother, Jacob. Every time I walk outside and I just look up, I can see so much potential. I really feel like the chateau is a diamond in the rough. It could be so beautiful if just restored to its former glory. Younger sister Naomi and her fiancé Cameron currently live in Australia, but will also join the team. With all the thorns and thistles and, and uh, yeah, it's so difficult to get to and, and to see really the beauty of it. And I know Daryl doesn't like all the romantic part. No, no, it, I do. It's not that. But to me, I, I feel it is a sleeping beauty and I feel really excited about it. 
they bought the chateau for 950,000 euros and are budgeting another 750,000 to transform it into a luxury hotel and wedding venue, with rooms charged at between 200 and 290 euros a night. They're converting the barn for functions and the outbuildings will eventually be turned into homes for all the various family units. They plan to open for guests in May 2016. That's around two years from start to finish. See this show? Show? This. This, is, this shouldn't be here. Get rid of it. Show the stairs off, yeah? It's a giant gamble. Everyone has sold their possessions, sold property, sold, well, anything. Anything that could be sold, we've sold it. We've put everything on the line to make this work, everything. If it's easier, go round, turn round and come back down. Well, it's a bit hard to reverse it. Just drive round then. In September 2014, the huge job of clearing the overgrown grounds begins. Obviously, being on the tight budget, we're trying to keep within that. You try to do as much as you can to, to try and save a bit of money. And I think that's our main focus, keeping it tight, trying to keep, not to waste money, which sometimes puts us under a lot of pressure, but we'd rather that than and save a, a bit of money now, because they'll give us a little bit more towards the end, because you don't know um, what hurdles we're going to hit yet. Luckily, the Bromleys are a very practical family. Dad Gerald, Mum Cheryl, son Jacob, and son-in-law Scott are all professional plasterers. We always tell the kids we have since they were small that nobody's ever died from hard work, <laughs> which I don't know if that's actually true, but never mind. We tell them anyway. <laughs> and uh, and the, you know, there's no shame in in failing as long as you got the guts to get up and try. While they build the hotel, they'll be crammed into one small corner of the huge house. We've just taken up two of the rooms from the, from the chateau, from the middle of the big tower, so that we can just live um, while we're doing everything up. So we live in this one, and in the next room, Sarah, Scott, and the two children live in that one. So there is, yeah, seven of us in this. Well, it's, we say tiny little area, but I suppose it's not on the great scheme of things, but no, it's, it's still it's all crowded happy. in and, yeah. I, I probably find it difficult to try and share a room with not really just my parents. I mean, I'm right next to my, my sister and my uh, niece and nephew, which is very loud, especially, especially when you're tired. It's like the last thing you want to hear. And on a Saturday morning, they, they burst in, and, you know, Uncle Jakey, Uncle Jakey, Uncle Jakey. So they, they, they ran in, they ran in, which, you know, it, look, it, it, it's really nice. But I think probably, you know, when you work with everybody every day, six days a week, and then, you know, you've only got a little bit of time to yourself and to try and share a room and things like, like, things like that, it's tough. But, you know, it's a sacrifice that we all have to make, isn't it? Yeah. <sighs> this is clearly no ordinary family, and neither is it an ordinary renovation. All their plucky can-do spirit, the scale of this project has the potential to overwhelm them all. Every job you do is like the job is on steroids. Well, you know, we've made a promise to ourselves to accomplish this and to the children to accomplish it. I wouldn't want to let anybody down. It's really important that this is done. Ninety miles north of Bordeaux, one family are taking on a gigantic challenge. Jeff, you can take that one down. That's Jeff Rock too. Yeah. The Bromleys, originally from Wales, are trying to create a lasting future for the entire family by converting a rundown chateau into a luxury hotel. Right then, Jake. Get the, the ladders in. Get up there. Take that off with Mum first. Up. Yeah. Mum Cheryl, son Jacob, Dad Gerald, and son-in-law Scott have all worked together before as a professional plastering team. They'll handle most of the building work. It smells awful. It does smell awful. With daughter Sarah Jane and her kids in support. 
What we really would love to do and are aiming to do is to bring back the whole feel of the chateau, the real feel of the King Louis. I don't know which one it is because there were so many, but that, just that feel of, of the romantic feel inside as well. I just want everybody to feel like a princess in a castle. And Guy. We are a princess, do you? <laughs> Very biased. And a prince. OK, thank you. <laughs> Have sword Sweet. fights in the garden, yeah? Yeah. What do you call it, duels? Yeah. Mm. Uh, I haven't got much. But right now, Cheryl's romantic vision seems miles off. Oh, it's pretty stuck. Can you try and lift it off the ground, Scott? Ready? Yeah, yeah. lift it up. There we go. Just pop, pop it here. Oh, that smells very bad. Currently living in just two crowded rooms, they've set themselves a seemingly mad target of two years to transform the chateau into a functioning hotel. They've even taken to making lunchtime deliberately uncomfortable so they won't take their foot off the gas. In the beginning, we started, everyone went inside uh, for their lunch and then everyone came back out and it, it took much more time and it was much harder after you had sat down, relaxed, had a coffee to come back out. We just want everyone to do their best because at the end of the day, it's theirs. It's, it's, it's everyone's here, so we all take a part in the share of it, so everyone should put in equal amount of effort. And you're all working for the same goal, you're all working and, and striving for the same thing. Having Scott here as well has been a good thing for us all to sort of, you know, become closer. We've been very used to, to working together as a family and um, I don't really want it to change. I'm just glad that the extra ones coming into the family, like Scott and Cameron, are happy to work along with us as well and, and want the adventure the same as us. I remember one, one lady asking Cheryl, did, did you go on holidays together too? I mean, <laughs> it's as silly as that is, but they, they just can't get to grips that you work together every day and then you, um, you still live together and don't argue. I definitely think something that keeps me going is that I'm hopefully doing this for myself and my future family, but I'm also doing it for, for my parents as well, as well as, well as I'm doing it for, for my both sisters, my, my both brother-in-laws, I'm doing it for, for their children, my nieces and uh, nephews. So I, I think there's a lot more at stake than just my own future. I think that's what, what motivates us all to get up in the morning and keep going. Morning. Morning, Paul. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Good, Paul. Good to see you. How are you doing? I spoke to the planners yesterday. They're happy with all of the plans and we're nearly there with the accessibility. Um, it just comes down now to whether the fire authorities will accept that you don't put in the fire doors around the staircases. Okay. It's no coincidence bureaucracy is a French word. The mountains of paperwork required to do almost anything in France and, uh, are legendary. Well, I'd say they'd want this all to be fire, a fire corridor, if you like, and then yeah. that would have to be a fire door. The Bromleys have sensibly brought in local architect Paul McMahon to advise them on how to navigate through the minefield. The Bureau of the Control will finish their fire safety report at the end of the week. I'll go meet them on Monday just to tie up a few loose ends. When I arrived first, I think the first thing I said to Gerald was stop me immediately because we need to take a step back here to make sure that we don't end up doing work which has to be undone different layers of bureaucracy overlapping and conflicting with each other from time to time and then having to deal with that in a foreign language is kind of mind-numbing. If you think you can just go to the mayor and that the mayor says okay and then you can just head on, it doesn't work like that. Paul has helped us with all of the paperwork. His French is way better than ours and because he's been here so long as well he knows a lot of the procedures that we need to go through. Yeah, so that's right. You know. They're happy enough with all the other paperwork, they're happy enough with the plans, they're just waiting for accessibility and for safety. OK, great. OK, that's really good news. Good news, thanks. By December 2015, after several bureaucratic delays, the Bromleys effectively have the go-ahead to start work on the chateau's interior. And they're in a hurry. In less than two months' time, they'll host their first wedding. We've still got the walls to do, we've still got the lights to put in, and obviously all the windows and the doors still have to go in. 
true to form, they're keeping it in the family. Down, Scott. Youngest daughter Naomi and fiancé Cameron currently live in Australia, but plan to move to the chateau to join the family project. They're getting hitched in the barn. Naomi's big day, and we have to get it right because obviously you've got one shot at anybody's wedding, but obviously your daughter's is very important. So the goal is get the rooms ready four before Naomi's wedding if we can, and, and seven so the hotel can open. Having a speciality so you stand out from the crowd is vital for a hotel. Their fairy tale setting means weddings make sense. But the Bromleys must be sure they can deliver every time. Hopefully the first of many weddings that we're going to have. We have to get it done. It's uh, very important for the chateau and, and obviously for my sister as well. So uh, she would never forgive me if I didn't get if we didn't get this ready. By January, Sarah Jane's sister Naomi and her fiance Cameron have arrived in France. Mm -hmm. But despite her family working flat out night and day, the chateau remains a building site. Down here is the first bedroom with the bathroom just off as the ensuite. We still got stuff to do for tomorrow. We are still kind of ploughing ahead with it. It's been really stressful, really, really stressful, only because obviously we don't let anyone down, and in particular Naomi and Cameron, but um, we didn't have any time off for Christmas, New Year, nothing. Every Saturday we've worked as well. We've worked longer hours in the day. No one's had any rest. So obviously it's um, still got quite a lot of work to do. Yeah. Just like to add that this was one of the bedrooms that was going to be done for the wedding. Obviously we just didn't get that far. No. Um, so the beds yeah. are going to be directly there, and we're going to have a mini bar, and it's going to be complimentary. So whatever's in there, they can yeah. help themselves. Yeah. Why didn't you get the room ready for us? Should we tell us what we would have had? The unfinished bedrooms are a blow to the Bromleys, but luckily for them, the progress is enough to wow the new in-laws. I saw first visit here to the chateau, and mm. absolutely unbelievable. What they've done from the photographs that we saw uh, a few months ago to how it is today just blows your mind away, absolutely okay. blows your mind away. So we're uh, going to um, try and get at least four stars for the, for the hotel. That's what I would really like. It's hard feeling that this is going to become Cameron's home. Because um, it's not as though it's, you know, a couple of hours away. Um, but I can see that he is part of the family, um, and as a mum, as long as he's happy, <laughs> um, that makes me happy. But this wedding is not just about impressing the family. The eyes of the local community are on the chateau, and for this tight family unit to make a success of the hotel, it will need their support. It means everyone, even the groom, must pitch in. There's no excuses in this household. <laughs> Everyone gets put to work. Oh, we don't mind working because we're not like this isn't just for the wedding, this is for the rest of our life. Like. We have quite a lot of work left before tomorrow. We have to finish this uh, staircase, we have to finish installing the toilets, we have to install a sink, we have to take down a scaffold, we have to finish putting the baluster rail in upstairs. We have uh, quite a lot of work and very little time. If we don't get this done tonight, then 50 guests tomorrow won't have any way to go to the toilet. <laughs>
then a few days, and then all of a sudden now it's here. So it's, this is one of our first milestones because this is the very first time we've had so many people here. Oh, how are you feeling? Good. Yeah. I think I'm more relaxed than anyone. Are you? Yeah, I think you probably are. I'm feeling quite emotional. It has been quite a trek to get this far. We didn't accomplish everything we wanted to do, but yeah, we're happy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we should get going. <laughs> it's all about you now. It's all about you. The town hall is just an eight-minute walk from the chateau. Another tick for the Bromley's business plan. Puffy dress coming from. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> The wedding has been fantastic. They, they adore each other, they really do, and for us, it's, that's so important. A decent wedding booking could net the family several thousand pounds for just the hire of the grounds and barn. Add in a bridal suite, guest room sales and any extras, and it could be a money spinner if they can get it right. Everybody in, in our village are very impressed by the, the, the job they did. Before it was uh, for, forgotten, now there are families, there are the live inside, and it's very good and it's very important for the village. Oh, yeah. you got Scott on your team, we've got the advantage. A bit of tweaking, you can see that even the winter wedding would work really well. You just need a couple more fire baskets, maybe, <laughs> and a better heater. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. We are so happy that everyone's come to the chateau. <laughs> everyone loves it. It's been incredible. Yeah, it's been incredible to spend something that's like so important to us with everyone that we love and especially the community of Le Mans. Mm -hmm. like, and a place that we, we did ourselves. We're moving here next year, so it's gonna be our life as well. So it's been amazing. Cameron, he's a perfect mix to the family, because mm. the same as Scott, mm. you know, it just all works. But just two weeks later, the Bromley's grand game of happy families is dealt a crushing hand. Sarah's husband, Scott, has left. A very sad devastation, actually. Near Bordeaux in France, Welsh family the Bromleys are following an ambitious dream transforming a 14th century chateau into a luxury hotel in which the whole family can live and work for generations to come. Right, Jake, give that a clean out and you can knock that up straight away if you want, yeah? But in February, their grand plan is shattered. Come on, let's go. Two weeks after celebrating her sister's wedding, Sarah Jane's husband, Scott, has decided to return to Australia. Divorce proceedings have begun. It's been hard. You don't expect something like that to happen. And when it does happen, it's um, a shock to your system. Come here. What's wrong? What's wrong? The kids have found it hard. And when they ask, for their dad. Harry! Mommy's gonna get the big one. Do you wanna come and help? Yes, it's gonna be a great opportunity for me to kind of keep going and prove to the kids that mommy's still strong, she can still go. Right, let's go get the small ones. See, this is why we need to get a wheelbarrow. But at the same time, he started this with me and I'd really like him to be here when it finishes. We don't even know his real reasons for, for not wanting to be part of this because he was very excited, put a lot of you know, time and effort. 
um, also part of the investment. It's been, it, it's knocked us. Harry? Harry, do you want to come and help? I want this to be for the kids. I, I need this to work for the kids, and I want them to have a business, and especially for Cecily. Come on, Missy. Let's go get the rest. And the reason it's important because of Cecily is because she has Williams syndrome. And here comes the tears. <laughs> Ready? Hey, Cecily, can you take them all the way over there for Mummy? Can you take them all the way over there? Williams syndrome is a rare disorder that can include <laughs> physical problems and learning difficulties. <laughs> Sufferers are often very sociable but risk being isolated as adults. I guess without this, she won't have like a good future and I need this to work for her. The loss of Scott is more than an emotional blow. He was also a key part of the workforce. It's put a lot more pressure on everyone as well because we're one person down and then one person less as well because she Shell does a lot more with Sarah to help her with school because she doesn't drive and things. So. Is, so we lose a lot of time with Shaul during the day, so it's really two people down. It's a blow to their utopian dream. The family must plough on with a smaller team. And come March, Mother Nature has decided to put the boot in. I'll probably cut it there. I don't think you'll be able to cut that. Wire. I was going to say, I'll probably cut it there, and then, and then, and then I'll cough chop it there. Storm force winds tear through the region. They were pretty extreme. They got up to 50, 50 miles an hour, so they were, they were pretty high winds. We had a fair bit of damage. You can see, like, the wind's been making them all lean, so the ones that are really leaning, we'll have to take them down as well, because eventually they'll just fall over. Just another thing to fix. <laughs> All right, watch out, because it's going to come out. There you go. But the trees aren't the worst of it. The chateau itself has taken a battering, and the roof is damaged in several places. For the chateau, it's going to cost a fair bit, probably up to about 11, 10, 11,000 euros just to fix it to get it all done because it's so high as well. You have to get all the proper machinery and the guys properly to do it because that's one job we won't be doing. <laughs> it's May 2016. According to the Bromley's plan, the hotel should now be open for business. But the loss of Scott, a dwindling budget, and the slow turning cogs of French bureaucracy mean they're far from it. All right, that's, that's pretty good. So this morning we're putting up the fire sheets onto the walls, finally, in the bathrooms, which is great, because we've been wanting to do this for quite some time. All right. Okay. Yeah? Okay. okay. This is an important stage, I think, probably <laughs> mentally more than anything, because we feel like we're moving forward. Obviously, we've got to get these bathrooms prepared for when we open. Nice job, Jake. Yeah. yeah. I have to call this bathroom the chicken bathroom. <laughs> chicken bathroom? Chicken box. <laughs> All the screams. <laughs> the family must rethink their strategy. I'm swallowing really hard when we talk about this. It stresses me out so much, this part. <laughs> oh, my God. OK, we seriously need to come up with some plans because opening later than what we wanted to, obviously, it's going to strain the budget. It's straining the budget, that's right. So we really do need to be bringing in some money. We really, really do. This side of, of the end of the year. So I know we absolutely can't wait mm -hmm. until those rooms are ready. I can't, we can't. No, we can't because we won't be able to survive. Hi. 
Hi, Cheryl, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Yeah, really good, yeah. Good. yeah. Just thought we could just talk about some ideas that we could have for the reception room sure. and obviously for the Mackie and stuff yep. outside. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. Is that okay? okay? Yep. The Bromleys think they could handle some weddings before the guest rooms are finished. But having no prior experience in the wedding industry, the family of plasterers need expert advice. Will local wedding planner Samantha see the same potential for the chateau that Cheryl does? <laughs> Door's a bit stiff. OK. So I'm sure you've got a good imagination <laughs> yes. of how this is going to look. Okay. So what um, we're going to do, obviously, is have white walls. We'll have other lighting put up. We've got two large chandeliers going out. OK. But we're also going to have other lighting for moods for the night time, so that okay, will that also help. OK, that sounds perfect. OK, that's good. Thing. I think what you've done up to now is great. I think the balance of the, the natural walls with the white walls would be perfect. And a neutral palette is great because it means we can do whatever we want for the couples. Oh, it's a bit chilly. So both of these doors open up completely. Okay. Well, I think that's lovely. Mm. Um, obviously, we'd need to push it back a little away from the marquee. We could maybe have the cocktail inside, mm -hmm. and then maybe we could come out here for, for the eating, yes. and then maybe we could go back in there for the dancing, because this, right. this is a perfect area. That's what makes this venue great, because we can use it for intimate weddings, down to 20 or 30 people. But with this outside space, obviously, we can make it much bigger. Much bigger. So That's we right. could probably get up to, you know, 100, 150 people, which would be brilliant for That's you. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. If you're looking, there are couples who will spend just about €4,000 on the hire of the venue. But once you've added in all of the extras, you're looking here, I reckon you're looking at about twenty to €30,000. So it's, it's a good revenue for you, definitely. Mm -hmm. It's clear the barn and gardens alone have potential to bring in cash, but without the finished guest rooms, it'll be small change. As soon as I walked up the driveway and saw it, I thought, yeah, this is perfect. This is lovely. Lots of chateaus here. Some of the accommodation is OK, but it probably could do with updating slightly, whereas this is brand new. And this is being done very much to a boutique hotel style. And that's more and more what people are expecting. So as soon as the bedrooms are finished, which obviously is essential, we can start booking weddings. I can't wait for us to work together. So yeah, that's I'm looking forward to it too. Oh, yeah. Thanks so much for coming. That's my absolute pleasure. It's positive feedback for Cheryl's ideas. But for every plan made at Chateau Le Mans, there always seems to be a spanner just waiting to be thrown into the works. Oh, that's going. That's going. <laughs>
It's definitely been frustrating because we've wanted to kind of push ahead with a lot of stuff. So it's, it's put us behind a little bit with, well, quite a bit actually. <laughs> we say a little bit, but um, yeah, quite a bit with what we've been doing because we've been wanting to get on with this for quite some time. It's taken two years to get to this point. Despite the missed deadline, they're determined to keep going. It's nice to see him, see him doing it, yeah. Getting him back into the old, the old team again. But the only thing is, is, everyone's a bit rusty, so <laughs> more ends up on the floor at the moment. <laughs> We've all forgotten how to do it. Isha? Uh, why, why Isha? Why, why are you picking on me? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're doing better than Jake. <laughs> it's a very significant point because, you know, for so long, this part has looked like a cave, basically. So now, it, all of a sudden, it's coming alive. It's starting to brighten up. It feels like a hotel. And there are more reasons to be cheerful, as recently married daughter Naomi has arrived with her son, Charlie. Husband Cameron will eventually join them when he leaves the Aussie Navy. It's really exciting and we're, like, the family is coming back together. We know we're still waiting for Cameron, you know, because we've got one missing, but, you know, we're almost all together sharing this experience. I think Naomi being here is going to be a massive asset. I mean, she's got bringing a lot of knowledge that she's already had in her own work and stuff. I mean, she's done management. <laughs> she's done management and um, involved in events and stuff of new. So you, she's got a lot of knowledge that she's bringing. That's not all Naomi's bringing. We found out after we got back from the wedding and back in Australia that I was pregnant, so. Yay! <laughs> yeah. What do, you, what do you think? You got his brother on the way. Yeah, yeah, he's got another little brother on the way. At the rate they're going, they need every new worker they can get. Okay, Joe, that's crap. There's loads of marks up there. How many nooks and crannies are in the stupid corners? <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy to paint, is it? Hmm? Nope. By the end of the year, the Bromleys family fantasy runs into a brick wall. Um, so our current uh, situation at the moment is um, that we've come to the end of our budget. We have run out of money. We're not going to be able to open. They can't afford to finish the hotel bedrooms and it's hit them hard. I tried to kind of put it aside in my mind because I didn't want to speak to Gerald about it in the beginning because I thought it would just be better if we kind of just carried on going and to see how far we got. But I think it was very disheartening um, because obviously I desperately want this place to be opened and for uh, people to, you know, see what we've done. I was really upset and, and quite down about it. Yeah, it's, it's hard. Quite a bit's happened in the last two years. We planned a slightly bigger team to work here. We, we, we planned on you know, Cameron coming over and joining us as well, but that hasn't also worked out at the moment. So we've lost a lot in the way of manpower to be able to do the job. I suppose that's got a lot to do with why we are where we are now. The family bought the chateau for 950,000 euros. The 750,000 they budgeted for the renovation has run out, and they can't borrow more. When we took trips to the bank, and you realised that they weren't going to be there to help us, I think it was just all in one go, and you, you just, it's very overwhelming because you want to get this finished. It's a bit hard not to kind of get upset about it. But the family have so much to be positive about. What the handful of them have already achieved at the chateau is amazing. After languishing as a shabby and dated B&B, the interior of the chateau is well on the way to being restored to its aristocratic glamour days. And the barn, originally a cavernous agricultural space, has been given a completely new lease of life. The family have successfully turned it into a smart events room, blending its traditional roots with all the functionality a modern venue needs. Okay, here we go. Oh! <laughs> 
Here we go. They're far from beaten. You know, we have had our ups and downs. It's been a bit of a roller coaster ride. It really has, with you know, emotions and, um, and family physically, stuff and, and yeah, especially with family stuff and. Um, not quite how we would, would have liked it to have finished, you know, without Scott and stuff, but, you know, it is what it is, and we've, we're going to get on with it. We would never, unless we were dragged out here kicking and screaming, give up on it. It's cool, huh? The Bromleys still hope they can hire out the barn and grounds for events and activities, like the one they're test driving today, to raise the money to finish the hotel. <laughs> Both are assets they really should exploit. They've taken the chateau's grounds that were once an overgrown mess and completely rejuvenated them. We realise how big a job it is, really, I guess. When you look back like that, stunning. And they've turned a tatty-looking building into a photo op just waiting to happen. It's beautiful, isn't it? It really is beautiful. When you see it like that, look at that. It looks like it's got a teardrop when inside the teardrop. Inside the teardrop, I know. Wow. That. When you look back at the, the chateau, it's, it's beautiful, but you kind of think, wow. When you can see it from up here, you get the true idea of the size of yeah. what you're dealing with. With their undying optimism and their don't stop till you drop work ethic, who could bet against them achieving their dream hotel? When you go back to work, I mean, that's an option too. You know, obviously it'll slow down the progress of this place, but, but if that's what we have to do. You know, work is hard, true, and we don't stop. That's also true, but the rewards are huge, I think. They're definitely worth it, aren't they? I couldn't imagine doing this with anyone else. I don't anyone. think anybody else is nuts enough to do it, shall Probably they? not, <laughs> probably not. No. If you weren't doing our best, I would say, yeah, you know, for shame on you, you could have done better, but... No, well, you we, can't beat yourself up. Otherwise, you can't be looking back thinking, oh, we didn't reach that goal, so let's give up. No, we, we, we just set a new goal. Yeah, I think we could accomplish anything. We're as brave as each other, or as stupid as each other, and mad as each other. 